Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me, Greg Soul, to another Ansible Automation Platform demonstration. This go around, I'm be doing multi-vendor, and I say multi-vendor because I'm doing it against Cisco and Arista, but it could be any vendor's products. The idea is that uh, it can be somewhat vendor agnostic. And I'm going to be doing NTP and SNMP network compliance. And um, don't take this as boilerplate. The only way you can do it, there are a lot of variations you can make. This is just the way I like to do it. And some of the folks I've seen do it like to do it this way as well. Um, but everybody's environment's a little bit different. So just imagine massaging it and changing it a little bit to uh, fit works, what works best for you. So first things first, I'm going to go over the compliance process. Number one, you're going to want to have this automated, right? So you put all these workflows in here and then you just put a schedule on them so that they'll run, you know, as per whatever your compliance process dictates. So you could have it run monthly, weekly, even daily, right? You're probably going to have backups that run daily. You could have this run directly after uh, to check for compliance. Next, um, my automation is going to create a compliance file on the server on the Ansible control node. It's going to just have a flat text file that we're going to be filling out with the compliance information as we go. The very first thing it's going to do after it creates, rather creates the compliance files, it's going to run the NTP automation and check and compliance mode. So when I say that the NTP automation, say you run it outside of, uh, check or compliance mode, you're just running the regular automation. Uh, it's actually going to go in there and configure your piece of equipment. So if I have a new switch, I'm bringing it into my environment. I've got switch four. I put it in there. I'll run it against this NTP automation and it's going to grab the configuration settings that it's required for this device and it's going to actually apply them. So this is my day one provisioner for my equipment. It's also, um, I said check mode. And so check mode, you have two options inside of uh, the Ansible control environment. You can either run it in run mode, which I'm going to go in and I'm going to make configuration changes to this piece of equipment, or I can run it in check mode or sometimes called dry run mode where it will just uh, show you the things it's actually going to change, but it won't change them, right? The, the output will say changed, but it's really just indicative of what would happen if I was actually in run mode. So compliance mode for me is really where I am just setting a variable that's like compliance check. I'm setting it to true. So uh, at some point I might want to run automation in standard check mode and I don't want that to start doing all the compliance pieces and building the reports and everything if I'm just you know doing some testing. So it has to be in check mode and compliance mode for it to do the compliance stuff. Next, I'm gonna do the exact same thing for SNMP community strings, right? I'm gonna run the automation it's going to be in check and compliance mode. It's just going to build all the, uh, the list of things, right? So it's going to kind of loop through, find anything that would change and add that to the compliance file. And very last, and this might be different in your environment, right? It's entirely up to you. For me, if the compliance file is empty, which means everything was in profile, then it does nothing, right? In your environment, you may have it generate uh, a ticket in service now, or an incident that's closed that says compliance was fine, you know, whatever it happens to be, it says it was fine. In my case, I'm only going to be reporting on if there were conflicts and I've made sure that there are conflicts. And what it's going to do is connect to ServiceNow, my uh, development environment, and create an incident based on the contents of that compliance file that we build as we go. So this is my lab environment. I've got three Cisco switches, one, two, and three. And then I've got an Arista switch named Arista switch one. <clears throat> Here are the files that I'm going to be building based off of. So I've got uh, USNTP uh, and that's got the server settings. So it's got all ones and all twos. And then I've got the uh, US SNMP file that's got my community strings in there. Community string one, community string two. And I've got them uh, to where they say US because in the inventory for these devices, I've actually got a location specified so that these could be regionalized, right? So it could be uh, one set for North America. I could do it state by state. I mean, you could break it up country by country. It's like, however you want to do it. It just gives you the flexibility that at runtime, whenever it's processing switch one, it's going to look up its location and it's going to grab the appropriate files based on that, right? So I'm going to grab the US file. So US NTP and US SNMP. I've got all of these in the exact same uh, location, right? Same region. So they're all US based, but 
Again, that's just trying to illustrate how you can have some flexibility in your infrastructure using the same piece of automation to do it against, you know, things in all kinds of, and so it could just be um, not necessarily broken up by uh, location. This could be environment, right? So this could be dev production, you know, I mean, use your imagination. It can be anything you want it to be. So here is the steady state of these devices. Like, what does it look like right now? These are the current configurations. So switch one, he is 100% in compliance. He's got the right NTP servers and the right community strings. Switch two has nothing configured. <clears throat> so whenever we run the compliance check, it's going to add stuff to all of those. Anything you see in red here is something that's old and needs to be redacted, right? So it's going to be removal of this NTP server for switch three, as well as these communities. You can see he's already got the correct community string. So it's just going to be removal there. And then addition of the all twos NTP server, the Arista has the correct NTP servers, but it's got one old outdated SNMP community string that it's going to remove. And then it's going to add the other two new ones in. So how does this actually function? I'm doing it with a workflow. And so inside of Ansible tower, and I'll pop over here really quick. This is my tower environment. Uh, just to give you the quick and dirty tour, the nickel tour, you have inventories. These are going to be the host I'm operating against. So what devices am I going to perform automation on? You have projects, which are my uh, collections of information that I'm going to be using. So it's going to be my uh, Git repository that has my playbooks. It's got my configuration files, my templates, all that stuff that's pulled in. Then my Git repo into a project. Then I have credentials, or how do I log into this piece of equipment? And then I have templates, job templates, workflow templates. So that kind of pulls it all together. The template section does all the various pieces. So I'm going to search for compliance. I'm going to show all of my little individual job templates. Each one performs a different task. If I look at my diagram here, I've got uh, create compliance file and then NTP configuration. If I look over here, I've got the pre. So this creates my compliance file. And then here's the NTP configuration. Here's SNMP, right? So I have all these little pieces of automation that perform individual things. Well, I tie it all together with a workflow template. And if I edit that workflow template, it'll show it. So it's all just the individual boxes, right? Network, compliance, pre, uh, compliance, NTP, compliance, SNMP, post. And then this alert is if the post fails, it's going to send an alert. So if I pop back over to my diagram, all the green boxes correspond to what's in my workflow. So workflow start, start. Compliance pre, that's right here. Create the compliance file. So NTP configuration, when it hits this, <clears throat> what it's doing is it'll take switch one, right? So I've got four switches that are running in this inventory. It'll take switch one and look up the host var section in the inventory. So there's an option in there, or rather there's a variable named Ansible Network OS. And for my regular Cisco iOS devices, that is uh, set to iOS. If it's an Arista device, it's set to EOS. So it's just looking that up and it says switch one. What network OS are you? Are you iOS? Yes. Go over to the Cisco NTP config um, task file. And it's going to complete all of the uh, configuration steps in there using the US NTP file, right? Because it's regionalized per device. Then it's going to do the same thing for switch two, switch three, switch three. It's going to check and see that it's an EOS device. Well, it's going to call the Arista NTP uh, task file. And again, it's going to reference this US NTP file because it's regionalized to these servers. It's going to format all the commands and complete that right there. Next thing it'll do is it'll run to this SNMP configuration section and it'll do the exact same thing. Are you Cisco? Go to the Cisco route. Are you Arista? Go to the Arista route. And then at the end, it's going to complete the compliance incident section. So I'm going to come in here now that we've taken a look at the workflow. I'm going to go ahead and launch it by clicking the launch button. And I want to dig in a little bit of what happens inside of this NTP section right here, NTP configuration for these devices. So what does that look like on the inside? <clears throat> the first thing it does is when it determines uh, switch one is a Cisco, it sends it over to the Cisco task file and it looks at the current configuration. So it issues a show run pipe include NTP, right? So it's grabbing all those NTP servers, saves that into a variable. 
The next, it's going to connect to that regionalized file and it's going to pull in the, the ones and two servers, say that into a variable. Then it's going to convert those ones and twos variable into the command structure that a Cisco is expecting. So it'll be NTP space, server space, and server address. Last, it's going to take those uh, two different ones, the very first variable with all the existing configurations, and then it's going to take the uh, third variable that's got um, the formatted, this is how it's supposed to look. It's going to compare the two and find anything it needs to remove, any that shouldn't be there. Now, if I'm natively running this application, you know, I'm just uh, running it without checking compliance mode. After it completes the variable section, it's actually going to come down. The very first thing it's going to do is remove any non-compliant NTP servers. So it'll just issue no and then uh, NTP server and the IP address. So it'll get rid of that guy. Then after it's done with that, it's going to step over and add the compliant NTP servers in an item potent fashion, which means it's going to say, hey, add uh, the one server, add the two server. And when it says add one server, if that already exists in the configuration, it'll say, great, you're already in the desired state. That's just okay. I won't do anything. But if the one server isn't there, it'll say, oh, you don't exist, changed. I've made an adjustment. I've made you the way uh, you should be. However, in this instance, we are running it in um, check mode and compliance mode. And so what we're doing is uh, instead of actually making an adjustment, it's just going to tell me what it would change. We're going to move down to this bottom section, a little code block I have down here, and it's going to say, hey, for switch one, if any NTP uh, servers were removed, add a line to the compliance file saying that, right? And it'll do switch two, three, four, it'll just run down the list. Then it's going to move over to the uh, next task, and it's going to say, hey, if NT any NTP servers needed to be added for switch one, add it to the compliance file, switch two, switch three, right? I'll add on down the list. And then it's going to complete and then move on to the SNMP section. So having said that, let me pop into my uh, workflow. Now that it's done running all green lights, everything was good. It completed. So I'm going to pop into my service now instance. I'm going to go to the incident section. I'm going to look for all incidents. Here it is. Network gear non-compliance. I'll click into that incident. I had it save as my name. I actually set the urgency and the uh, impact, you know, all this additional information. And then I also added down here uh, the uh, non-compliance file. So that non-compliance file, I just took the contents and shoved it in as a comment. So I've got uh, switch three, removing some NTP servers, switch two. And again, the way this appears is all down to formatting, right? I can do virtually whatever I want to do with this. I can um, have this uh, formatted differently with different headings. I could actually have it create a, a different incident per device you know, with all of the non-compliant entries that are in, I just, you're right. Just use your imagination with this. Uh, this can be changed to fit your environment however you want. So one thing of note was, remember switch one was the only device that was properly in compliance. So that's the only one that doesn't show up in the list. So it successfully ran. I have all this in my public Git repo, but what I wanted to show was the NTP servers US and the compliance SNMP for the community strings. So if I take a look, here's the servers pulled in. It's all just ones and twos. So it doesn't matter if this is Cisco, Arista, Juniper, Palo Alto. I have the raw information for the NTP servers in here, and I'm just going to format that in individual subtasks for that specific piece of equipment, right? So I can keep all of my pertinent information, uh, you know, here's my community strings. I can keep that all very generic, right? Here's just the raw information I need. And at runtime, I'll make this look however it needs to for the proper operating system. So I can keep my data generic and it doesn't matter what operating system I'm applying this to. I can always just operate on that same piece of information. So instead of having to go and update, I don't know, 10 different playbooks for 10 different models of devices, 
I only have to come to this one individual file and update it to be, these are what the servers should look like, and then run the reconciliation automation, right? So these playbooks, since I've wrote them to do the initial configuration, you know, I can, as I'm building out stuff, I can run it then. And then when I need to do compliance, I can run them in compliance mode and I can find all the devices that are not compliance. Well, now that I've done that, I've got a list, I can run that playbook again for remediation. So it's actually going to repair uh, all of those non-compliant devices. It's going to remove the things it needs to and it's going to add the different services or whatever I configure that's required. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. How would you adjust this to your environment? Do you um, think you would make any tweaks or changes to this? Uh, let me know. Thank you guys and we'll see you next time.